the movie is set in the year 1945. It revolves around a woman named Grace Stewart, who lives in a large, creepy house in the Bailwick of Jersey with her two children, Anne and Nicholas. It's winter, and the World War has already ended, but Grace's husband, who is fighting in France, hasn't returned home yet. Grace has hired servants to look after the house and her children, but two weeks ago, all of them mysteriously left their jobs without notice. One day, three people, Mrs. Bertha Mills, Mr. Tuttle, and a mute girl named Lydia show up at the house, and Grace immediately suspects that they are here in response to an ad that she had posted for new servants. And since Grace is in desperate need of them, she quickly welcomes the trio inside and gives them a tour of the house. She also explains the strange rules that she has implemented there. One must never open a door without closing the previous one, and the curtains must always remain children are photosensitive. They break out in rashes and sores if they are exposed to even a small amount of sunlight. Grace further explains that the house doesn't have a telephone or radio because she prizes silence. Moreover, there isn't any electricity because they are used to living without it. <laughs> These people are vampires. The servants are weirded out by the strange rules, but nonetheless they agree to them and start working. Mrs. Bertha takes the role of the senior servant and serves the children breakfast. As they eat, the little girl, Anne, asks Mrs. Bertha if she too would abandon them like the other servants did. This puzzles Mrs. Bertha, and Anne reveals that their previous servants left the day Grace went mad, worried about their family secret getting exposed. Nicholas yells at his sister to shut up. It is clear that something bad went down on that fateful day. When the two start to squabble, the noise attracts the attention of Grace, and she orders the children to finish their breakfast quietly. Grace then takes Mrs. Bertha to another room and confronts her for pretending to be a prospective servant. It turns out Grace found out that the advertisement she had sent to a local newspaper seeking servants was never published. Mrs. Bertha apologizes to Grace for keeping them in the dark and reveals that some years back, she, Mr. Tuttle, and Lydia used to work as servants in this very house. They had grown so attached to the house that they have come back looking for work here. Mrs. Bertha further claims that she was sure that a large house like this one would always need extra help. When Grace welcomed them, thinking they had answered the ad, Mrs. Bertha just did not want to tell her otherwise. Hearing all this, Grace changes her mind and decides to let the three continue working for her despite the fact that this is all sus as all balls. She then asks Mrs. Bertha if she is aware about the strange things that happen around the house. It turns out that sometimes people can be heard talking, whispering, and crying around the house. Mrs. Bertha confirms she is aware of the strange occurrences. However, Grace tells her that she doesn't believe in ghosts and warns Mrs. Bertha against affirming the children's beliefs that there are ghosts in the house. Here we get to know that Anne and Nicholas have reported to have heard and seen ghosts around the house, but Grace Grace refuses to believe them. Later that day, Grace asks Mrs. Bertha about Lydia's muteness, but for some reason, the old woman avoids talking about it. After Mrs. Bertha leaves the room, Grace hears Anne crying in the other room. Worried, she rushes to her side, but the girl tells her that she wasn't crying. In fact, it was the little ghost, Victor, making the noises. Anne claims that Victor was crying because he doesn't like living in this house, and his pianist father doesn't let him leave. However, once again, Grace doesn't believe in the story and scolds her daughter for spreading lies. The day becomes night, and Anne retires to bed with her little brother. It's revealed that Nicholas is afraid of ghosts, and he refuses to believe that Victor exists. To prove him wrong, Anne urges Victor to appear and confirm his presence. When the ghost boy obliges and appears, Nicholas freaks out. He for help, prompting Grace to rush to their room. Enraged, she immediately punishes her daughter for feeding ideas into her brother's mind. Anne accepts her punishment of memorizing the Bible, but refuses to deny that Victor and other ghosts exist. One day, Grace hears someone running upstairs. When she goes to inspect, she asks Anne about the noise, but the latter denies hearing anything. Grace then presses her daughter for the truth, promising to not punish her. It turns out Grace is fed up with denying the truth and wants to get to the bottom of the strange occurrences around the house. Anne finally admits that there's someone in the nearby room. When she goes to inspect, Grace sees an invisible figure leaving the room, opening and closing the door behind them. Terrified, she rushes out and asks Anne about them. The little girl reveals that the ghosts claim to own the house, and they are now planning to reclaim it. Grace begins to panic, and she discusses the incident with Mrs. Bertha. The old lady calms her down, and Anne shows her a picture of the ghost family that allegedly lives in the house. It turns out Victor lives with his father, mother, and an old woman in the house. Anne 
Anne claims that she has seen the old female ghost the most. Hearing all this, Grace finally believes her children, and she calls all the servants and carries out a ghost hunt. Bust out the peanut butter boys, we're catching Casper tonight. She orders them to open all the curtains so there aren't any dark corners where someone could hide. However, they fail to locate anyone. Instead, Grace comes across pictures of the previous owners of the house. She also finds a photo album, and strangely, in all the pictures, the people photographed are sleeping. Grace asks Mrs. Bertha about the strange album, and the old woman reveals that the people in the photographs aren't sleeping. They are actually dead. It's the book of the dead. In the last century, people used to take photographs of the dead in the hopes that their souls would go on living through the portraits. Grace is shocked by the tradition, and Mrs. Bertha comments that grief over the death of a loved one can lead people to do the strangest things. As expected, Grace is weirded out by the books, so she orders Mrs. Bertha to destroy them. Later that night, she sits down with Mrs. Bertha and talks to her about the previous owners of the house, who apparently moved to London. Grace again asks her about Lydia's muteness, and the old woman claims that the little girl stopped talking one day for no reason. However, Grace finds the story hard to believe, as she feels like Lydia must have gone through some sort of trauma for her to suddenly stop talking. That night, Grace wakes up to the sound of someone playing the piano. Must be the penis father. Er, uh, oh, the pianist. Pianist father. That makes more sense. When she walks over to that room, she again witnesses the presence of an invisible being and gets frightened. The next day, Grace discusses it with Mrs. Bertha, and the latter mentions that she believes her. She tells Grace that sometimes the world of the living gets mixed up with the world of the dead. This is why they are constantly being visited by the dead souls, who are apparently the previous owners of the house. As expected, the revelation terrorizes Grace, and she decides to get her house blessed by a priest. But before leaving to find Father McGraw, she orders Mr. Tuttle to look for gravestones on the property. It turns out Grace was told about a small cemetery inside the property when her husband bought the house. She suspects that the previous owners of the house were buried inside the property. After Grace leaves, Mrs. Bertha and Mr. Tuttle discuss the former's departure. Surprisingly, two alleged servants are hiding secrets of their own, and they are aware about the hidden graves on the property. Meanwhile, Grace gets lost in the mist, and instead of finding the priest, she finds her husband, Charles. She is shocked and also relieved to find him alive and well. For some reason, Charles looks lost and very out of it, but Grace brushes this aside and brings him back home. The children are also delighted to finally have their father back, and they welcome him with a warm embrace. However, much doesn't change after his return, as he spends most of his time lying down on the bed, hardly interacting with his family. Moreover, after her husband's return, Grace again goes back to denying the existence of ghosts, much to Anne's dismay. The scene then cuts to the day of Anne's communion. Grace leaves her daughter for a moment and heads to another room, but when she comes back, she is horrified to find her sitting on the dirty floor in her communion dress. Moreover, the little girl is aged to become a creepy old woman. Puzzled and afraid, Grace chokes the old woman, demanding to know where Anne is. Eventually, the veil rips off, and Grace learns that the person in the dress has again turned to her daughter Anne. Horrified by what just happened, Anne runs away, accusing her mother of trying to kill her. Grace is also equally shell-shocked by the incident, but she doesn't know how to react. Later that day, Charlie strangely confronts her about something that happened a week ago. It turns out that he is talking about the same incident where Grace went mad. Appearing remorseful, she breaks down and insists that it wasn't her fault. She doesn't know what took over her that day. However, Charles doesn't believe her and insists that he has to return to the war. Grace is naturally against this, and she reminds him that the war is over. Soon, the two get into an argument, but one thing leads to another and they start to make love. The next day, Grace wakes up to find that Charles has left again. As she despairs over his departure, Anne and Nicholas wake up to find the curtains in their room gone. When they start screaming, Grace quickly rushes to their side. She tries to take them to a dark room, only to realize that all curtains from the entire property have been removed. Left with no choice, Grace blocks the light from the window with a chalkboard. But surprisingly, despite them coming in direct contact with sunlight, the children don't break out in rashes and sores. Instead, they demand to see their father, but with a sad look, Grace reveals that he has left again. She then confronts the servants, demanding to know where the curtains went. However, they appear to be nonchalant and suggest that Anne and Nicholas are no longer allergic to sunlight. This infuriates Grace, and she orders them to leave the house. Afterwards, the children nervously hear their mother turning the house upside down, looking for the curtains. Afraid that she has gone mad again, they decide to sneak out of the house in search of their father. Grace eventually makes her way to the servants' rooms. There, she finds a photograph of Mr. Tuttle, Lydia, and Mrs. Mills, inscribed 1891 from the Book 
of the dead. This reveals that the three are also ghosts who had died over 50 years ago. On the other hand, Anne and Nicholas come across the gravestones of the same three servants. Surprisingly, the trio appears in the distance and starts approaching Anne and Nicholas. Afraid, the children run back into the house with the servants following. They reunite with Grace, and she immediately jumps in to protect them from the approaching ghosts. She tries to shoot them, but as expected, the bullets have no effect on the ghosts. However, Grace locks them out and tells her children to hide. From outside the door, Mrs. Bertha tells Grace that she must learn to live with the dead in the same house. She claims that she and her friends died long ago when they contracted tuberculosis. And just like Grace, they were unaware about it for a few months and kept living in the house as if nothing had happened. But one day, they eventually got to know the truth, and that is when Lydia went into shock and became mute. Mrs. Bertha continues that even if she and her friends leave, the other ghosts will never leave the house, and they will eventually find Anne and Nicholas. Soon enough, the old ghost lady from earlier in the movie finds the children, who yell for their mother. Grace rushes upstairs, and there she notices the old lady and Victor's family sitting around a table. It's clear that they are performing a seance to speak to Grace and the children. The old woman is acting as the speaker. Here, in a shocking turn of events, it is revealed that Grace and her children are the actual ghosts. Moreover, the woman and the other people sitting at the table are normal humans who have been tormented by the dead's presence. Grace and her children are already dead, but they are unaware of it and continue living as if everything is normal. The old woman tells the children that they are dead and asks them about what happened on the day they were killed. Grace panics and tries to stop the seance. When nothing works, she grabs the medium paper and tears it apart, eventually managing to break the seance. Later, Grace finally comes to terms with the situation and reveals about the day that she went mad. Her husband Charles hadn't returned from the war, and this caused her to spiral into depression. And on that fateful day, she couldn't bear the pain anymore and killed her children by suffocating them. After this, she committed the unthinkable. This was the reason why the servants left the house unexpectedly. Moreover, it is also revealed that Charles, who returned to the house, was also a ghost, as he had already died in the war. The house is currently inhabited by the pianist, his wife, and son Victor. They are scared to death because of the hauntings of Grace and her children. The movie ends with Victor and his family leaving the house. As Grace watches from upstairs, the house is again put up for sale, but Grace and her children vow to never leave the place, as they belong here.